The best thing I can do to illustrate the absurdity of wokeness is tell the story of what happened to me, Sarah Brash, at Yale. I am the Yale grad student who was vilified on a global scale as the Yale Nazi, who was using the campus police to try to lynch black students during the notorious living or napping while black incident at Yale. Actually, the living or napping while black incident at Yale was a living while black race hoax one of many during the past five years, including the Central Park race hoax with Amy Cooper, eating while black at Smith College, and entering while black at Columbia University. I refer to the living while black race hoax of the past five years as the great racism scare. Of course, the fake news press and the black trauma moral outrage industry pushed every Karen Gone Wild video, destroying nobodies with wanton abandon. But this is about more than innocent lives being destroyed and innocents being driven to suicide. A brazen new form of grossly unconstitutional hate crime legislation, Karen Acts, were promulgated in state and municipal legislatures across the U.S. Cancel culture and trial by Twitter, otherwise known as mob vigilante injustice, seriously threatened our constitutional principle of due process. And the Living While Black Race hoax was a major part of the Democratic Party's political platform to demonize white women in particular to defeat Trump. What does the Living While Black Race hoax of the past five years have to do with wokeness? The Living While Black Race hoaxes, especially those on campus, were largely perpetrated by the woke intersectional feminists critical race theorists, and diversity, equity, and inclusion, or DEI bureaucrats to justify their huge salaries. Because in truth, there is almost no anti-black racism on campus. And they target those students whom they consider disposable, poor white trash interlopers, students like me. This is what Yale did to me. They decided months before the culmination of the living or napping while black hate crime hoax at Yale, when I was falsely accused of having perpetrated a racist hate crime comparable to a lynching, that they were going to use me as their Nazi to justify implementing their vast new Maoist DEI bureaucracy belonging at Yale. Yale had been targeting me for expulsion for years, for being an unwoke civil libertarian who defended the federal civil rights, the religious expression rights of an evangelical black man at Yale. For years, I had been a social pariah on Yale's campus, ostracized by my own co cohort of graduate students in the philosophy department. They would leave a room if I entered it. I argue that cancel culture, and I refer to it as woke KKK cancel culture, largely arose out of the need to decimate the victims of the living while black race hoaxes, including me. The language of the woke uses terms such as modern day lynching for the infamous Jesse Smollett hoax. That's why I come back to them with inflammatory language they can understand. According to woke intersectional feminism, race hoaxes cannot exist. A foundational premise of CRT is the moral, legal, and or epistemic supremacy of those deemed oppressed over those deemed oppressors. In layman's terms, if a black person accuses a white person of having perpetrated a racist hate crime, that is the end of the story. No due process or equal protection or federal civil rights needed or desired. That white person's life, livelihood, and reputation are now fair game for woke KKK cancel culture destruction. I encourage all of the victims of the Living While Black race hoaxes to speak out. I now consider Amy Cooper from the Central Park race hoax to be my sister. Until there are real consequences for destroying the lives of innocent nobodies, the Living While Black race hoaxes will continue. Someday we will look back in horror at the great racism scare and we will wonder why we ever thought it was okay to subject nobodies to social death and suicide via the woke Twitter mob without due process. This is why I call it woke KKK cancel culture.